So this project and this presentation in particular kind of has like a lot of sides to it, right? Um, and today I'm going to talk about the more, let's say, proof theoretic side of things. But it has a purely semantic, uh, there are a lot of purely semantic explorations going on in connection, like the other side of the coin of the talk that I'm going to give you here. Um, so if you're interested in that, we can chat. Um, I'm going to wave at some semantic stuff, but uh, you know that things are going to be focused mostly on calculus here. Um, and that being said, Marcus, how, how long do you have? Like, uh, 40 minutes, something like that? The session is 90 minutes, so you can divide that up whichever way you okay, want. Okay, good. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. So, yeah, um, let's start then. Um, so this is joint work with Bruno, the, re, um, the, um, the semantic stuff that I'm going to talk about is also partly being discussed with uh, colleagues from France, from Paris, uh, Paul Egrea and Emmanuel Hemla. So, um, that is also in preparation. Um, and, and here I'm going to talk about different sequence calculi for classical logic, um, where cut is admissible. And by this, I mean merely admissible. It's admissible, but not derivable, right? Um, so basically, I want to get clear, like, what's the starting point of this investigation, right? So of course, my question would be, what are all the sequence calculi where cut is merely admissible that we can think about? You I hopefully come, which all the candidates that I'm going to consider, calculate with identity or reflexivity and weakening. Okay, and contraction. So unrestricted identity, unrestricted weakening, both to the left and to the right, multiple conclusions, contraction all over the place. So it's going to be sets, right? So nothing very complicated is going to be you know, lurking around. Um, and in what follows, I will be mostly referring to Gensen's LK, actually probably notational variants thereof, right? So not exactly Gensen's formulation, but in spirit, it's the same. And um, when I talk about introduction rules, I will be meaning introduction rules from the rules that I'm going to present next. Uh, I will be probably be referring to these rules read from top to bottom, okay? And when I refer to elimination rules, I will be referring to bottom to top readings of the same rules. So these are the rules. Right, we have identity, we have weakening here, we have cut, uh, we have rules for negation, conjunction, disjunction. This is the you know the the the, the signature I'm going to work with. And uh, nothing is very much dependent on these. Uh, a lot of variations could be fine, conditionals, other connectives, whatever is fine to define classical logic will be okay. But yeah, this is easy, so we went with that. So interaction rules are going to be the top to bottom reading of these rules and the elimination rules are going to be the bottom to top reading, right? Okay, so this I will call it K. I know it's not exactly what Gensen presented in the 30s, but it's basically the same in spirit, right? Cool. So again, the, the, the aim is here for me is to investigate um, sequence calculate for classical logic, meaning that they will derive all the classical sequence, right? Um, and where cut is admissible. And there are a lot of options that we already know, or the, in the literature are pretty much known that they work. And in fact, some cases they are the standard presentation of, of classical logic, right? So for example, we know that LK itself works, right? So we know that all the introduction rules plus cut, plus reflexivity, plus weakening, plus et cetera, et cetera, it gives you classical logic, all the, the, the classical variable sequence, right? So it has all the interaction, it has cut. So all interactions rules with cut, it works. We also know that all interactions rules without cut, it also works, right? Meaning with reflexivity, with weakening, it. So that, that, that is always going to be assumed. We also know that all interaction rules 
plus all elimination of the wood's work. Of course, this is really trivial because we already know that all introduction rules work. Right? So, of course, adding elimination rules is not going to you know, disrupt anything. That is also can that also can be seen as as, as another you know take on LK because we know that all introduction will work. So of course adding cut will work, right? Cut is admissible after all. And of course adding all introduction, all elimination, and cut, yeah, that is that is um, LK if we understand LK in terms of derivability because all the elimination rules are derivable in the introduction in the in LK meaning the top to bottom rule plus cut. So all these options are perfectly fine. Nothing really interesting is going on on this slide. There are a couple of options that I personally, and with Bruno and some colleagues, would like to know whether they work. And at least we haven't seen them discussed you know, thoroughly or in detail in the literature. So just for matters of symmetry, we would like to know, what about the elimination rules? What about if we only take the elimination rules? So the bottom to top rules, right? We take reflexivity, take uh, monotonicity, weakening, take cut, uh, sorry, take um, uh, contraction, etc. But only the elimination rules, no introduction rules. Does it work? Yes, no, why, etc. What about the elimination rules plus cut? Does it work? Yes, no, why, etc. What about all the elimination rules, but just some introduction rules? No cut, but some introduction rules. What about all the elimination rules, some uh, introduction rules, uh, sorry, what about some introduction rules and some elimination rules? So not all the full stock of the elimination rule, but some, just some of them. And what about some elimination, some introduction, um, and some cut? So not no unrestricted cut, but some instances of cut, right? Like, for example, cut only for negations, cut only for conjunctions, cut only for disjunctions, right? So restricted forms of cut, not, not, not like a full extent. And of course, we can cook up you know, many, 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 many intermediate options here and there. And I'm actually going to discuss only a few of these. Um, I, I don't have the full answer on all, even all of the options that I listed here. So you can see that there is some room for discussion already. I'm going to discuss the first one, which is only the elimination rules plus reflexivity and you know, monotonicity, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm going to discuss um, all the elimination rules plus some introductions plus some cut and some introduction, some elimination, and some cut. These three options I'm going to discuss. Two of them are going to be fine. One of them is going to be doom. You will see which one that is shortly. So all the elimination rules, right? This is a tempting option because we know that uh, all the introduction rules with reflexivity, monotonicity, contraction, et cetera, et cetera, but without cut, they work. I mean, they give you classical logic. We know that. We know that uh, um, you know, cut is admissible in LK, and in some sense, cut is usually taken to uh, you know, mean that cut is somehow eliminable from LK, right? That you can get rid of cut, and you will have the same set of variable sequence. So you can actually, you know, if you want to think about classical logic, you can think about LK without cut. And all the introduction rules will be fine. So what about all the elimination rules without cut? Would that be fine? Yes, no, and why? So here I'm going to, so the answer short, long story short is no, it doesn't work. All the elimination rules do not give you classical logic, okay? So if you only consider reflexivity, monotonicity, you know, contraction, et cetera, et cetera, but all the elimination rules, no introduction rules, no cut, this doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't go well. Okay, so th there probably are proof theoretic arguments, and, and some of them might be even you know very perspicuous and you know uh, tractable because you know proofs in this calculus are going to be very funny options. Right? They're going to be like linear objects. There's going to be no branching there because all the elimination rules only have one conclusion, right? Uh, and, and there's no like, there's nothing going on that will take you from one sequence to two sequence when you use the elimination rules, right? Which could be a case, but in, in, in these cases, not right in this calculus. So um, 
already this could be you know somehow implemented to give you a proof theoretic argument of why this will not lead you to all the classically valid sequence that you will otherwise want to get right but here i'm going to present a semantic argument so this will already spill into the other sides of the coin of this project um so let's just take one example right um from phi and psi it follows that phi or psi this is a classically valid argument this is a classically valid schema and uh, it's not going to be derivable in this calculus with all the elimination rules all the axioms but no cut no introduction rules etc and here's the semantic argument semantic argument is going to um appeal to a semantic counterpart of the notion of derivability right uh, for rules which in which for sequence is just sequence probability okay and the semantic counterpart for this notion is actually uh, investigated for strength for, for uh, structural logics and by this i mean you know logics with reflexivity cut all the structural rules it's investigated by lloyd hamberson he calls it global validity but in the recent literature on these topics, global validity is already taken for another notion. So we refer to it as absolute global validity, okay? Together with Bruno, Paula, and some colleagues in Buenos Aires. So basically, I'm going to show you that this sequence is not absolutely globally valid, okay? I'm going to introduce some, some definitions for that. So whenever we have a set of rules, so basically a calculus, Right, and we have a, a fixed notion of logical consequence. Um, for example, in this case, for you know, for systems where cut is only admissible but not derivable, you know, probably the, and you have reflexivity, probably the target notion should be something like ST, right? Something like what Dave likes to play with, um, which is a non sort of non-transitive notion of consequence. Basically, you have three value valuations. And uh, something is valid if it doesn't have a counterexample. And it has a counterexample if all the premises are true and all the conclusions are false. But of course, things can be neither true nor false. So, you know, this gives rise to a sort of non transitive consequence relation. When we have a fixed notion of logical consequence, you can define sets of valuations, right? And sets of sets of valuations related to a certain calculus, right? And in this case, you can define what uh, Hamilton calls the local range of a certain set of rules of a calculus, which is the set of all valuations that preserve satisfaction over R. So basically, if the valuation is not a counterexample to the premises, then it's not a counterexample to the conclusion. And when you take the set of all valuations that have this property, then you have the local range of this calculus. You have then another sort of range, which is the absolute global range. Again, for a given set of rules for calculus and a given uh, notion of logical consequence, which is a set of set of valuations, right? It's the set of all sets of valuations that preserve validity. So that's why it's absolute, right? It's global validity means preservation of, of, of validity, and absolute global validity means like, for all sets of, uh, of valuations that preserve validity. So there is an interesting relation between the local range and the absolute global range, which is that, you know, validity over a singleton is basically the same as satisfaction over that valuation. So basically, all the members of the local range are included as singletons in the absolute global range. So what I'm going to show now is that all the elimination rules, just all the elimination rules are not fine because Basically, there are counterexamples to some classically valid sequence that we can cook up semantically. And given the coincidence between the semantic notions that we have and the notion of their ability, therefore we know that they're going to be not provable. Okay. So we say that a meta inference is absolutely globally valid um, if and only if basically it's valid according to every set in the absolute global range. Okay. And um, the idea is that derivability or probability of sequence in this case coincides with absolute global validity. And we can see that this uh, sequence that we wanted to discuss has a counterexample, right? So 
Uh, there are valuations in the local range of the elimination rules, uh, and which are therefore included as singletons in the absolute global range that do not satisfy this classically valid sequence. So basically, there are valuations in the local range of the elimination rules, which can make conjunctions true while making the junctions false of the same you know, components. Um, and basically, that means that there is a counterexample to this sequence. Okay, so given this, we know that this sequence is not derivative because it's not um, absolutely globally valid. Okay, good. So here's the local range of the elimination rules. So these are all the valuations that are such that if they satisfy the premises, they satisfy the conclusion for the elimination rules. Okay. And when you have multiple things in one slot, that means that you know every option is admissible. It's fine. It's going to be a good choice. It's not going to to uh, break anything. Um, okay. So basically, you can see that the conjunction of one half and one half can be one, while its disjunction can be zero. So that's why uh, you know the, the 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 sequence that we were discussing is invalid. And these truth tables are called the strong shooter truth tables, very interesting objects. Um, they are discussed in this paper by Bridget Hosley and, uh, and Jaeger in the 90s. Good. So we know that you know, all the elimination, we, we wanted you know, to discuss all these options. Sequent calculus for classical logic, we wanted to look at different options. One option was the elimination rule, just the elimination rules. Because we know that all the introduction rules are fine, what about all the elimination rules just by themselves? Well, the answer is no. All the elimination rules, they do not give you the classically valid sequence that you want to have. Um, okay, so what about some other options? Okay, so what if you know all the elimination rules were not fine, but what if we supplement them with something else that will help us, you know? increase the stock of probable sequence and semantically speaking get rid of all the situations the conceivable situations which you know broke sort of semantically the validity of the sequence that we wanted to have so the, the question is can all the elimination rules and maybe perhaps even some subset but can all the elimination rules be can this set be extended to a, a satisfactory calculus without collapsing into the options that we already know that are fine. So one options, one option which has elimination rules is basically all the introduction, all the elimination. Another option is all the introduction, all the eliminations plus cut. But we, we don't want to collapse into those sets. We already know that those sets work. So what about elimination plus something else, which is not, not everything that we already know which one? Okay, so so we are going to show at least two candidates here, um, which will consist in adding some introduction rules, not all the elimination rules, and some instances of cut, but not all instances of cut. And we will try to focus on minimal options, uh, and, and we will we'll see. Okay, so two options that will be very interesting for us to discuss are the following: all the elimination rules some introduction rules so basically the left introduction rule for negation the right introduction rule for conjunction and disjunction and cut for negations the other the other set is perfectly dual so all elimination introduction uh, right introduction rule for negation left introduction for conjunction disjunction and also cut for negations of course this is very much dependent on the language that we chose if we chose you know uh, let's say Sheffer's stroke then probably things are going to be different, but uh, everything is translatable into that. So let's see why this option works. Okay? So why do this option work? So, so a sort of tentative justification that I can give you, it's very, it's very uh, inductive. It's not a, you know, a, def a definitive justification for the, um, comes from a semantic argument. So basically what we want to do here is to get rid of the evaluations that you know screw up before the evaluations that sort of made that some of the classically valid sequence that we wanted to have 
that they were invalid, right? So we want to get rid of those counterexamples. And, and, how, and how do we do that? So, so if we are looking at extending the elimination rules, well, what we want is to add enough rules, right? So that the local range of these rules allows you, of these extended set of rules, will be such that in as much as, as you have certain rules, you will cross some options from all these, you know, true tales, right? Some evaluations will not be admissible anymore. So that's why we're trying to add these introduction rules. We're trying to add these introduction rules so as to have like a larger set, larger calculus, whose local range is going to be a restricted form of these truth tables. It's not going to be exactly this, but something, you know, more felicitous, more, more um, fruitful for our purpose. And uh, one way to look at that and how to achieve that is, and, and this also you know, brings me to the semantic investigation that we were doing, that in, in these tables are sort of encrypted um, particular sets of valuations, which are, very, very, you know, um, successful in giving you classical logic when you have three values and the strict tolerant notion of logical consequence. And these, these um, uh, families of valuations we call, in other words, collapsible valuations. And collapsible valuations come in two flavors, basically truth collapsible or falsity collapsible. What, what do we mean by that and, and why collapsible? So basically the intuition is that these are collapsible because the intermediate value and one of the classical values can be seen to be working interchangeably, right? So they are very classical. The one half value is not doing anything very interesting there, right? They, eventually they could be substituted for a classical value. Um, but, and the counterexamples that we used before, right? The one where, for example, conjunction of one half and one half was one, but disjunction of one half and one half was zero. This was a valuation which was very, very funny, right? Because if you if you ask yourself, okay, so in this valuation, one half is what? It's standing for something which is truth-like or something which is falsity-like, right? So with regard to conjunction, you would say, oh, it's very truth-like, right? Because one half and one half is true. But with regard to disjunction, you will say, no, no, it's falsity-like because one half or one half is false. So what we mean when we want to focus on collapsible relation is, you know, get your stuff together, make your mind. Is one half going to work as a stand-in for something which is truth-like or falsity-like? And you know, be consistent, right? Be coherent in your choices. And then when you do that and you start from this very, you know, weird beast, you can actually split two families, which are very distinctive, right? And these are the, tr the truth collapsible and the falsity collapsible. So you can see that, you know, by merging these two sort of tables, you get more or less what you had before, minus some options uh, that, that, that are not admissible. So, so we want to restrict, we want to extend the, the elimination calculus with some introduction rules so as to end either here or here, right? Uh, so, so as to, you know, lose the counterexamples that we wanted to lose, right? And in doing so, guaranteeing that all the classically valid sequence are going to be the random because there are not going to be any counterexamples there. Okay. Good. This is what uh, we want to do. Okay. So we want to extend elimination uh, calculus with rules that allow only for collapsible valuations in the local range. And we're going to do that. And by adding cut for negation, which is common to these two options. We do exactly that. So what does cut for negation say? It basically says that the negation, that negations are always classical, right? 
that for all, um, so he, sorry, here should, there should be a negation. And for all negations, negation are going to be either one or zero. There's not going to be any one half here, right? So if you saw the local range of the elimination rules, then this option was allowed because the elimination rules allow for this. But if you add cut, then the negation of the intermediate value is going to be either one or zero, right? And what you do by adding the introduction rule for negation is basically saying, well, if you have the left rule, then you say negation of one half should be zero. And if you add the, the other rule, you say negation of one half should be one, okay? So you say it should be classical, and then you say it should be either one half or zero, and since it should be classical, it should be actually zero, okay? Good. And, you know, Rules for uh, conjunction are basically doing this something similar to that. Uh, the introduction rules um, do exactly that, right? So, so you have the, the introduction rules, you have the elimination rules here, and you have this introduction rule, which basically gets rid of the zeros that you had before. It, it always will work like uh, as if it as if one half were something true, and similarly when you work with uh, these functions here, right? Um, okay, good. So, and of course, dually for the other calculus. So we have this option, and this option is just dual in, the, in terms of justification. So what happens when you get these two calculus is you get rid of these things, and, but you still need to justify formally why do you get all the classical value sequence and this is just sort of a completeness result meaning by that that you need to show that this calculus gives you exactly all the classical value sequence and this can be done in two steps so first of all you have to show that the set of proof sequence of this calculus is a, is a subset of the set of sequence which is valid in classical logic so lk with cal let's say so basically, why is that? LK with cut is stronger than uh, any of our calculi, the elimination rules plus some of the stuff, because all the rules of our calculi are derivable in LK with cut, right? So any of our calculi proves, you know, at most the same sequence. It doesn't prove more than that. You know, at most it proves uh, the same, right? So this is one side of the of thing. And the other side is that the set of sequence valid in classical logic is actually a subset of the set of proval sequence, which you know, containing the other thing means that they are the same. And um, you know, with that, to, to prove this, we can basically focus on the fact that LK without cut uh, proves all the sequence that are valid in classical logic. And all the rules of LK without cut are admissible in our cut. And since we have the same, I mean, axioms are rules without premises. So basically, since we have the same axioms and the same admissible rules, then we're going to have uh, at least the same sequence as LK without cut, which are basically all the classically valid sequence. So um, yeah, again, long story short, we end up with exactly the set of sequence that we want. Starting from elimination rules, adding just some introduction rules, some cut, uh, but not much. And uh, we end up with a different, two different calculus section for classical logic that at least uh, together with Bruno and some colleagues, which we, we just weren't aware of, of many places where this was discussed. And uh, if you know some, please, please let me know. Okay. So, so just in terms of wrapping up with some final thoughts, um, uh, let me just say the following. So, you know, our question was like, yeah, there are there any, uh, you know, calculus for sequence calculi for classical logic where cut is admissible that are different from the ones that we know, basically, you know, based on the introduction rules and extensions with cut with elimination rules. And so, are there any, you know, uh, successful options? that are built mostly based on the elimination rules? And the answer is positive. 
The answer is yes. Basically, you can take all the elimination rules, just throw in some of the interaction rules, half of them, and some cut, not, not much. Uh, and you can have successful calculi, right? Appropriate calculi. And uh, these are novel things, okay? But we actually know that these can be extended, right? So there are even more you know, creatures in this uh, space that do not collapse into the options that we already know, okay? So how can they be extended? So for once, they can be extended with more instances of cut, right? They can be extended for cut with cut for conjunction or cut for disjunction. Of course, if you extend it with cut from well, for both, uh, it, it's all uh, it's not going to be unrestricted cut because you still will need to have cut for propositional variables, right? So there are lots of room. There's a lot of room to you know create even more calculi, uh, which will be different to the ones that we already know that they are satisfactory, right? And that's another way of extending these with either more elimination rules or more introduction rules. So in some sense, cut can be seen as elimination rule. Uh, and you can also think about other introduction rules, right? So um, there are uh, some uh, you know, funky introduction rules for a uh, weak cleaning like calculus, right? So, uh, and as long as they are sound, um, I'm not talking about it specifically those, but just other interaction rules that you can cook up. And as long as they are sound, you can, you can throw them in. Okay. Um, and interestingly enough, I mean, one thing that Bruno and I thought is that um, this question can also be turned into a, a question of like, what's, what is, what is the structure? You know, again, guaranteeing um, reflexivity, you know, monotonicity, contraction, exchange, etc. What's, what's the structure of all these calculus? Can they be ordered in some way? Do they have a, a, an interval? Does this order of calculus in terms of you know, inclusion of, of rules and close under the derivability? Does it have a, like a supremum? Does it have a, like an interval? Uh, it seems that uh, it doesn't have a supremum. Uh, sorry, it doesn't have an interval. Um, because, uh, for example, we have uh, some calculus for the weak Clini uh, uh, counterparts of ST which is somehow incomparable to the strong clinic, right? And uh, in, in some other sense, even um, these two cases are incomparable, right? So uh, doesn't seem to be a clear candidate for that. Um, but again, still an open question. Um, and even you know, further, we know that these two options that are appropriate can be extended. But uh, interestingly, uh, they can also be weakened a little bit. So when I said that we wanted to extend the elimination calculus with additional introduction rules and cut in order to get rid of all the counterexamples, um, that didn't mean that um, everything that wasn't in the local range of the elimination calculus was nasty, okay? Um, so actually, there are some valuations which the elimination calculus gets rid of that are safe, okay? And you can recover some of them, safe meaning that they will give you classical logic if you consider the strict tolerant notion of logical concept. So in the one case where you have uh, the left introduction for negation and the right introduction for the others, you can actually lose the left elimination rule for this junction, and you can be fine still. So it will give you classical logic still. Um, so that will be, again, one instance of uh, you know, an, a positive and affirmative answer to the question, what about some elimination rules, some introduction rules, and some cut? And this will be an instance where you can answer yes. There are options which are satisfactory that work in that vein, okay. And if, and in the other case, dually you can lose the right elimination rule, okay. So um, we can say that more or less we entertain at least four options here, okay. So either the full elimination calculus with some extensions are fine, 
or um, not the full stock of the elimination calculus, but almost all the elimination calculus, but some uh, and some introductions and some cut is also fine. So at least for us, uh, this was a you know I'm happy finding a very uh, nice thing that that we encountered that we we didn't know that it will work, and there are a lot of things that still um, need to be investigated in this respect. But just having four candidates that will uh, you know uh, satisfactorily give you all the classical iterative sequence that we constitute you know sequence calculate for classical logic where cut is admissible but not fully derivable is a nice thing at least at least for us. So um, just to 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 finish here, um, one one thing that um, that we can that you can ponder one question that you can ponder is that whether or not we delivered in examining all of the sequence calculus where cut is admissible uh, that were not the satisfactory options that we already knew, right? And actually, we don't think that we quite did that because we didn't give you in this presentation all the sequence calculus, right? Um, we only entertain some options, uh, mostly having elimination rules and maybe you know some some interaction and some instance of cut. The thing is that we don't really know if the question is even tractable, right? Uh, so, so perhaps the question seems like a good question, uh, but you need to restrict it in order for it to be treated, right? So, so perhaps the, 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 you know, the title was uh, too, you know, too marketable, right? Uh, but, but it needed to be sort of instantiated uh, in order to for it to make sense and to be meaningful. Like, what are all the sequence calculate starting from elimination rules that give you classical logic or something like that, right? Because otherwise the question the question is just you know, too broad and it's not clear how to carve it. Perhaps it can be done, but we are not sure. Right? Um, uh, and just before closing, uh, there are a lot of techniques and uh, and things that we want to explore, like for example, you know. Um, reduction trees. We don't know exactly how to prove completeness in the usual reduction trees way as done in Girard or in Schutte or you know many works for this uh, elimination calculus. So there are a lot of open questions, technical and philosophical, of course, that need to be addressed. So if any of you has any comments on that or just suggestions, um, I would be much, much appreciated. And um, besides that, thank you very much for your attention and for your patience. And um, thanks again for the invitation.